And so we've got the first match coming up very soon. So um, both of these players you may have heard of as well, particularly Megan Russell, who's got quite a few accolades up her sleeve as well. Um, running like a possibly quite a similar team to her Brisbane team that she did pretty well in as well. So as you can see, the amazing team logo is just popping up there for you. Check those out on the VGC World Cup um, Victory Road website. Now, as we can see on Joan's end, he is a 2021 World Cup competitor from last year and doing fairly well with himself too, being one and one. And on the right is Megan Rattle with all four of those there and possibly even more too. Brisbane Regional Finalist, World Championship Top 8, Auckland Special Event Champion and the Perth Regional Champion. So this is going to be a great match to start us up for sure. So two great competitors going to be coming out. Uh, I'm going to be excited to see what both the players are going to be bringing to this match. You can see them, the teams there now. Uh, the Cataract Shadow Rider and the Grabber coming up for Joanne. Uh, paired with an Umbreon that did start to fall off. Uh, did appear quite a lot in Series 9 and 11. Is just starting to occasionally make a resurgence uh, in this Series 12. So it's great to see that. And yeah, like you mentioned... Uh, Megan is going to be running the, the team that she used to play second place in that Brisbane Regional uh, with just a slight change. Uh, I believe that was a Reggie Alecki over the top of Finney, but uh, pretty much the same core. So she should be very, very used to that core. Yeah, and quite unusual in this format to see um, absolutely no common Pokemon with either like team facing off. There's like no double Incineroar, there's like no same Trick Room Pokemon here, there's no Grimmsnarl. Like, this is going to be quite an interesting match. Yeah, definitely will be. And Umbreon is a Pokemon that is usually teched on for this kind of matchup. I think it's specifically for the Cataract Ice Rider, because uh, it's such a bulky Pokemon, it can take it on very well, and it can get some massive damage with the foul play. And uh, even if it gets a weakness policy boost, that's actually better for the Umbreon, because it can do some massive damage. So a uh, good pick for Joanne. Just initially on Team Preview, I wouldn't ex I wouldn't be surprised if we see that Umbreon coming to the match uh, at all, because it does seem like the perfect matchup for it. A lot of players do opt to run the safety goggles on that Umbreon as well. There is a Moongus on Megan's side of the field, so uh, we'll have to see if that is going to come into play. But for now, uh, it's going to be Tapu Fini and the Porygon 2 coming out for Megan's side of the field, whereas Joanne is going with the Thunderous and the Venusaur. Yep, so Megan is leading with her Trick Room option there, and arguably one of the most reliable in the format. That Porygon 2 being especially bulky, and what's going to stop that Trick Room potentially on uh, Joanne's end is a Sleep Powder, so she leads to that Tapu Fini to pre prevent any of those Sleep shenanigans going on. So it's now kind of down to what sort of Thunderous maybe Joanne has here, if, whether it's that Defiant boosting Thunderous or maybe a Prankster. Um, either could still run Taunt here, and that could definitely shut down Megan here, but we're going to go straight into this turn one with a Protect from Tapu Fini. Not the most common move on Tapu Fini, and not the most common move on Thunderous as well. You did call it there, the Taunt going into the Porygon 2. That's going to stop any of the Trick Rooms coming out. And a great read from Joanne here, just ignoring the Tapu Fini completely. There's the Leaf Storm into the Porygon 2 for a reasonable amount of chip, and it can't recover it off because it has been taunted, and it cannot set that Trick Room. It can't. So now Joanne's in a decent spot here. He's got a lot of the momentum now, and it's definitely on Megan to be able to switch around here and try and get that Trick Room back up for what is a pretty dedicated Trick Room team. So Juwan needs to be able to like position himself to be able to deal some damage here. Porygon 2 is now taunted, so it can't like recover off those boosts. But with a simple switch out into something that's quite bulky, such as the Calyrex Ice, um, it's going to be able to take a lot of hits. But we see Juwan actually switch into his Calyrex Shadow, and if anything that's going to make memento momentum, it is this massively powerful horse. Yeah, it would be doing some massive damage, but it's not to the Porygon 2, uh, because it is going to be switching up into the Calyrex. That is going to be a great switch for Joanne. They're going to be able to get the Shadow Rider in against the Calyrex Ice Rider. Uh, that is going to be able to do some massive damage with the Astral Barrage. No Dynamax coming out from the Thunderous. It is a Wild Charge, so it is not going to be uh, one of those pranks that support of sets most likely. Uh, even though it is carrying that Taunt, not going for the Dynamax, not enough to kill the Tapu Fini, even with that Life Orb as well. Uh, the Tapu Fini here just going for the Calm Minds to be able to set up. So not going to be one of the particularly supportive Tapu Finis with the Nature's Madness and the Hill Pulses and all that. Especially with that Leftovers com uh, com complementing the Calm Minds very nicely. Uh, that gives you space to run something like Protect so you can get those leftovers, uh, but the, the Calm Mind's not really going to come into play here. It's in su such low HP. That's even in range of Astral Barrage, even after the Calm Mind. It is, and interestingly, like, Joanne does just miss out the K on the Tapu Fini there, but you, you kind of actually, if you're Joanne, you're probably a little bit happy about that, because Tapu Fini's now kind of a dead slot here, and it's kind of a, an opportunity for Joanne's own Calyrex Shadow to get a, like, a Grim Nay boost. 
um, rather than getting, say, like, Tapafina Fini going straight down, Porygon 2 comes straight in, and you've got two Trick Room setters to maybe contend with here. So instead, Joanna's st still a little bit in the lead here, and as we know, Calyrex Ice is very weak to Ghost. So if Megan doesn't go for a Dynamax here, which looks like she does, she's going to be taking a lot of damage and potentially another Trick Room denied. So looks like she's going straight on the offense here with this Dynamax Calyrex Ice. Yeah, and still not a Dynamax Thunderous. That would have gone before the Dynamax of the Calyrex Ice here. And it's just to protect from the Tap Infinity. You don't want to be giving any of the Grim Name boost to the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, if you can help it as it is going for that Astral Barrage, that would have picked up the knockout on that Tap Infinity and got an extra boost. And it's still going to do a very good chunk of damage to that Calyrex. That brings it below half HP, even with the Dynamax as well. Followed up by a Brick Break from the Thunderous. Uh, just doing any extra little bit of chip in case the Calyrex did stay in its regular form to try and set up a Trick Room. But thanks to its Dynamax, it was able to survive. It's able to fire off a Hailstorm into the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider. And that is not enough to pick up the Knockout. And I don't think it's even going to pick up the Knockout, uh, even with that little bit of Hail Ship. And yeah, it's going to be able to survive for one more turn. It will get KO'd to the next turn to the Hail. Uh, but that's one more turn to launch off an Astro Barrage. We just saw it did half damage to the opposing Calyrex. Uh, that will be able to pick up the knockout next turn. That's a massive, like, survival on that Calyrex Shadow. Um, like, uh, as you said it, Jamie, like, that's a double KO you're threatening right now. T Megan obviously does have that Porygon 2 in the back, which is, able to, is potentially going to switch in and take it much nice, sir. Um, Calyrex Ice tends to be able to live in Astral Barrage normally, so with the fact that it's a two-hit KO, I wonder if there's a particular boosting item on that Calyrex Shadow that uh, Juwan hasn't completely revealed to Megan just yet. But he gets his Groudon in instead of that Thunderous and sets the sun up. Yeah, and Sapu Fini does need to switch out here. He is going to be giving a Grimne boost to the Calyrex if it did stay in. And Porygon 2 will definitely not be doing that. He's going to be able to survive that Astral Barrage by ignoring it completely. And so will the Max Guards to keep the Calyrex Ice Rider safe this turn. So just a little bit of a switching around this turn. No damage dealt, but that overwriting of the hail was very smart with the crowd on there because that allows this Calyrex to survive for one more turn. The Max Guard has been used from the opposing Calyrex. You can all drop one more Astral Barrage as well. And now the Porygon 2 is in, Megan is able to go for a Trick Room here. Calyrex is not going to be doing a huge amount of damage with Astral Barrage to it, and Groudon is definitely not going to be getting a one-hit KO either, even if it went for the Dynamax here. So, uh, yeah, Megan uh, smartly t switches out her Calyrex Ice and preserves it, because she probably knows she's going to get that Trick Room here, and that means no matter how low health her Calyrex Ice is, she can bring it in again and go for those huge Glacial Lancers that are probably going to be very key in getting her the momentum in this late game. Yeah, it's definitely not too bad sacrificing uh, your Dynamax only using one turn of it. Like you said, Glacial Lance is incredibly effective in Trick Room. Uh, there are some Pokemon that definitely want to be in their Dynamax form and then aren't so effective outside of it. Calyrex is absolutely fine. If the Trick Room does go up, then Calyrex will be able to still do a massive amount of damage. A uh, massive amount of damage won't come out onto this Porygon 2 because of the normal Typhoon from the Astral Barrage and the Tap of Finny will easily be picked up by that last little bit of damage. Porygon 2 is still reasonably healthy though, and the Groudon is pretty uh, pretty strong. Will the Max Quake be enough to knock out Porygon 2? If it's not, then the Trick Room is almost certainly going to be going up, and that will be a massive momentum swing for Joanne's side of the field. Uh, so, Grax Quake is going to hit into that Porygon 2, and it is such a bulky Pokemon, but still in the yellow amount of HP, not even bringing down to red. Uh, so able to survive that very, very comfortably. You do get your special defense boost that will allow you to take on potentially the Palkia that's waiting in the back, now the Calyrex gets to switch in, in the Trick Room environment, finally, after so many turns. Yeah, we still haven't seen that fourth Pokemon from Megan, so it is probably that Palkia is... You definitely want to bring your restrictors to most of your matches here. I'd, I w maybe if Joanna had maybe gone for like a, a Steel Spike boost, knowing you're probably not going to get the KO here, then you can take on the Calyrex Ice a little bit better. But yeah, Megan is now able to bring in her Calyrex Ice, so she's able to dish out those attacks just with a lot of damage right behind them. Porygon 2, it would be interesting to see what sort of moves it's got up its sleeve. If it is the kind of Calyrex Ice weakness policy stuff, Porygon 2 often carry that foul play. And that could do a decent chunk to a ground that does have a quite high attack stat. But Groudon being pretty bulky at the moment being with its Dynamax, it's probably going to be able to take whatever Megan has at the moment. It's just if Joanne has the ability to use the rest of his resources to store up this Trick Room and to get enough damage back because that Calyrex Ice is definitely looking in range of something that Groudon has. Yeah, it's probably not going to be able to pick up the knockout with the Glacial Lance when the Groudon is, is at full HP, and it should be in range of an attack. So this is going to be able to launch off the, the Glacial Lance, taking out the Thunderous that did switch in for the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider very, very easily, and doing a very nice chunk of damage to the Groudon. Uh, but the 
follow-up foul play that's probably coming from this Porygon 2 is not going to be enough. It's just going to want to recover instead, so they're going to be able to keep itself nice and healthy. Pretty much throwing off the entirety of that initial Max Quake damage. But now this Groudon is able to fire off yet another Max Quake. If it's going into the Porygon 2, it won't knock it out anymore because of the recover, but it is going to be launched off into the opposing Cadarex Ice. And because of all that extra damage it took initially from that Astral Barrage when it's in its Dynamax form, that is enough to pick up the knockout on the Cadarex. So it only got one turn to launch off the Glacial Lance in that Trick Room. Groudon with these two special defense boosters is looking pretty bulky now. If it is that Palkia in the back, yeah, which it is that Mega Net is now bringing in. And... She's in the sun too, so even like those strong water moves from Palkia, even if it's from a life orb, it's not going to be doing a lot to this dynamaxed Groudon here. And Joanna has another turn to get up at a third Max Quake to even further better take these hits here. Venusaur, on the other hand, is sitting in its Trick Room still, and maybe a double up from Megan can knock it out here. Uh, Joanna can obviously still could protect, but either way, Groudon is getting something big off this turn. Yeah, it will be, and the foul play is going to attack into the Venusaur, breaking any of the potential focus slashes that it is going to be carrying. Another Max Quake going into the Porygon 2 this time, bringing it back down to where it was before that recover, uh, doing a nice chunk of damage. And that is the third special defense boost uh, on the Groudon, uh, getting a special defense boost on the Venusaur as well, which may allow it to survive this spatial rend that is being launched off from the opposing Palkia into the Venusaur, uh, doing a very nice chunk of damage. But yes, the Max Quake is able to allow it to survive. But unfortunately, the Sleep Powder is, with that shaky accuracy, going to miss that Palkia. Yeah, no life orb reveal on the Palkia either, which is an item it often carries. So uh, potentially the Lustrous Orb or maybe like a, a safety goggles or something that is actually on this Palkia. Um, yet to be revealed here, and, but obviously in this first game, both players getting a lot of information from each other. Um, partic particularly that two-hit KO from the Calyrex Shadow. But we're going to the next turn and Porygon is recovering up even more now. And now that the Groudon isn't Dynamax anymore, it doesn't have as much power behind it to be able to dish it's damage back and get that Porygon 2 back down. Christmas Blades is doing a good chunk. We're not hitting, getting any KO. Spatial Rend out from the Palkia into the Venusaur does connect and gets the knockout there. So is Groudon versus the world right now. And you've still got the Cataract Shadow Rider waiting in the back, but uh, the Trick Room should be up for one more turn. And it's going to be able to be in range of any attack that Megan wants to go for here. The Foul Play easily going to be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Calyrex. Uh, the Palkia should be able to survive another Precipice Blades if that's launched off as well. Uh, so that would be able to pick up the knockout. So we've seen how much damage is coming out from this Calyrex. It's probably not going to be able to protect itself. Uh, so then the Groudon's going to have to try and get through the rest of the team with that Oregon 2 that could just recover off the Precipice Blades at this point. i will be able to survive that attack pretty comfortably and eventually be able to stall it out and the Palkia should be able to survive and just launch off another attack. So the Max Quake boosts are very nice for taking on the Palkia, but it won't be able to take on this Porygon 2 uh, as effectively because it will just eventually be able to win because you can just click this recover here with the Porygon 2 and attack with the Palkia into the Cataracts and then you'll be able to stall up Groudon. Yeah, like Precipice Blades is a great move, but it's inaccurate and it's powerful, but it's not, even with the critical hits here, we can see it's not going to be able to do enough to break this Porygon 2. Calyrex Shadow uh, revealing that we do we see it doesn't have protect, so it is going to go down to the Palkia's Earth Power. Trick from its spies. Groudon's in control for the this turn, but it's it's going to need to be able to throw out some rock slides if it has it. Maybe get some flinches, but I think from the cheeky little peek there, Joanne's showing us he probably doesn't have that option here. So it is just Precipice Blades until the end, but I'm sure both players are now thinking about that game too. Yeah, potentially. We still have to continue the special rends, but it's not doing too much damage because of all the max plate boosts. And there is the shaky action of the Precipice Blades. At least it hits the Palkia. You definitely want to be taking it out this turn. Uh, so now the Porygon 2 is going to be able to take down this Groudon very slowly. At least the Precipice Blades is now single target. So uh, if you do manage to get a critical hit at some point before the power play is able to take you out, uh, you may be able to take the game at that point. Uh, if the Precipice Blades had hit the Porygon 2 that turn as well, it would have probably been forced to start recovering until the Precipice Blades miss, uh, which will happen eventually, as we can see uh, very often in all of these matches. But the Porygon 2 is content to just foul play this turn, no need for the recover. And this Precipice Blades has to knock out this turn because that foul play was going to knock out uh, in two shots and not going to be able to pick up the knockout there. So the Porygon 2 should be able to take this first game with another foul play. Yeah, I think it does. So um, I really like the way Megan played this game. She kind of went for that early Dynamax. And she, we often see like that later Dynamax is maybe what like 
gets you the momentum there because you managed to stall out the opponent so you go for it but even with like not even using her, all her dynamax turns she was able to switch it out and get that crucial damage off of the ground to be able to get it down a little bit low enough that that Porygon 2 could just eventually pick it off of those couple of power plays right at the end there. Yeah, it was an in interesting swing of momentum because the, the Calyrex Shadow Rider surviving a Hailstorm is not something that often happens. So uh, maybe a little bit of bulk allowed on that Calyrex because of the extra power that we've seen come out from it as well. So uh, the fact that it was able to survive, but it needed the sun to be able to allow it to survive the, hail the turn of hail chip and stick on the field meant that the taunt had to be switched out from the Thunderous. And as soon as the Porygon 2 hit the field as the ground on did, that meant it was able to set up Trick Room. Whereas if the Thunderous is stayed on the field, you can taunt the Porygon 2, but you would have lost the Cataract Shadow Rider to the hail at the end of the turn. So it was a bit of an awkward trade off there was you have to sacrifice something. Do you sacrifice your Cataract Shadow Rider that has the best amount of damage against the Ice Rider? Or do you sacrifice the taunt that means you're probably not stopping Trick Room? And it turns out that stopping stopping Trick Room may have been necessary. So maybe if the Shadow Rider had been sacrificed, it could have been a different game because there would have been no Trick Room. But then the Ice Rider would be able to survive most of the attacks that have come out as well. Most likely. But like going to game two here, I'm sure Duan's like kind of taunt from his Thunderous, which is probably Defiant, uh, was a little bit of a surprise maybe for Megan. But it's not something that she's necessarily going to fall for game two. So imagining Duan maybe considering the Umbreon this time, as you said, Jamie, like I, I think we were both a little bit surprised when he didn't bring it because that's exactly sort of the matchup you want to be bringing it to. So we do jump into game two here. Megan is going for her same lead before and well, so is Duan as well. So... Um, both players obviously know their like matchup plan versus this, um, but we still don't know whether there's some bit a bit of changes in the back potential. Yeah, it's interesting going with both of these leads. Now we're playing the mind game of the, does the Thunderous go for the taunts? And if it doesn't, the Porygon 2 doesn't set up Trick Room, you could just launch off a Wild Charge or even the Max Lightning into the Tapu Fini for the KO. So it's going to be an interesting mind game here. Initially, when the taunt was revealed, you had a very safe play into the Porygon 2, but now it's going to come down to all the mind games. Yeah, it is. So if the same play kind of like ends up going out, then there's not a lot that's going to be happening in the game too. There's not a lot of momentum swing because, you know, Megan has a lot of safe switches into both of these um, options here because Venusaur can't sleep powder. So Venusaur ends up going for a huge damaging move with its Leaf Storm straight into that Tappy Feeny. So it's definitely not the same turn as turn one. Moonblast into the Defiant Thunderous most likely and not bringing up a like special attack drop. Um, but Thunderous is able to actually hang on here. And so it's going to be able to get another huge attack off here and potentially even KO this Tapuvini. Yeah, it was a pretty big survival there. And it was the opportunity to launch off an attack into Tapuvini. The Polygon 2 did not sector it through. It just went for foul play. So a very good play coming out there, expecting the taunt. Uh, the Tapuvini able to throw off at least on pretty well. It's taken a reasonable amount of chip damage. Probably not enough to pick up the knockout with a minus two Leaf Storm here. That's probably why the Venusaur is switching out, because it can't set the Sleep Powder, it can't do much damage at all at the moment. Uh, the ground is going to be joining the field instead of that. Uh, going to be able to reduce the damage of any of the Water-type moves that come out from the Tap of Vinny. Uh, the Program 2 is now taunted, so you can just fire off your attacks without any fear of Sick Trick from being set up. There goes the Brick Break with a critical hit onto the Program 2 as well, doing just under half damage. And then the Tap of Vinny is able to respond with another move Blast here into the opposing Groudon that did just switch in for a reasonable chunk of damage and another reasonable chunk of damage coming out from the Foul Play. The Groudon switching in takes over half damage with the combination of the Moon Blast and the Foul Play. So Juan has denied the Trick Room successfully, but as we can see, he's taken a significant more amount of damage than Megan has in these first couple of turns. So Venusaur being his probably main Dynamax option that you really want here, um, that, that, that ground taking so much damage is not looking such a healthy option. I mean, if Juan does go for the Dynamax and gets up those plate boosts, he's definitely going to be able to take on the power kill like a lot better than, um, or similarly to in the game one. Um, however, being up that such low HP, it's a little bit dicey as to like how much he's going to survive. And we don't know the speed interactions um, precisely between ground on Palky or, or whether there's going to be a little bit of speed tie. However, helping hand, Heat Crash comes straight into the Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is a sitting duck here. Very light. Doesn't want to be taking this huge, heavy based move. At, just as Tapafini goes for the Protect as well. So a great play, Joan here. 
Yeah, really, really nice play for Juan. That's no trick from coming up from the Porygon 2 this turn. Let's have Finny is slowly recovering its health with the leftovers. It's back over half HP, uh, but not going for the attack that turn. That was potential Carmine that could, could, could have come out uh, to be able to definitely survive the least storm that could have come out from the Venusaur, even the GMAX Vine Lash at that point. Uh, and instead, just going for the tech getting that little bit of uh, extra HP. Uh, Paragon 2 going down, but here comes another trick from set to this. It's one of the nice things about this Calyrex Ice Shredder uh, Palkia team. We've got so many options to just go for the trick room. If one gets taken care of, in comes another one that set the trick room. So now Palkia could very easily go for that option as well. And we didn't see the Dynamax coming out from the Venusaur. Helping Hanky Crash was enough. You could have gone for the Vine Lash and the Heat Crash, and that would have still came with the Porygon 2, uh, most likely, and then you'd have got the residual damage. Uh, but stalling out for just an extra turn will allow an extra bit of chip onto an opposing Pokemon uh, in the following turns, because you're going to KO the Porygon 2 anyway, you might as well try and maximize uh, any of the turns that you'd be coming up to the Venusaur, if it is going to be going for the, the Dynamax uh, anyway. So we'll have to see if that is going to be the option for the Venusaur, because I still wouldn't expect the Groudon to be going for the Dynamax. But yes, there comes another helping hand from the Venusaur. Another helping hand, and I think we saw a little slight timeout on Juwan's end there, but he doesn't go for the Presbyterian Blades. He's smart enough to put a pretty big move in his first slot. It's enough to take out the Tapu Fini, but it does miss the Palkia. No KOs that were going to happen there, I don't think, but Trick Room is able to go up for Megan finally on her end. So she can now most likely bring in that Calyrex Ice and really start using four full turns of Trick Room to her advantage and bringing in an Ice type versus these two Pokemon that Juwan has. It's looking really nice for her. Yeah, it's an interesting decision going for Helping Hand there. Again, you still could have gone for the Vine Lash and the Precipice Blades. That would have been very close if it was able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Palkia, given that it didn't Dynamax and did set Trick Room. Even if it wouldn't have KO'd, it would have started taking the Vine Lash damage. It would certainly being KO'd in the future turns. Then you just leave the Calyrex on its own to try and sweep through the Trick Room, which it is a Pokemon that was probably the best at doing that. But yeah, but now the Calyrex Ice Rider is in a great position. The Precipice Blaze dodge means Palki is at full HP. If that wants to Dynamax as the Calyrex Ice Rider launches off Glacial Lances, you get to maximize the amount of HP as well. So uh, quite a nice dodge there from the Palkia. Uh, it would have taken a lot of damage from a Helping Hand Precipice Blades, but now the momentum is completely in Megan's side of the field. It's going to, if the Calyrex Shadow Rider is waiting in the back for Joan, it's not going to be able to survive the Trick Room at all as well. So uh, really, really strong position coming up for, for Megan here. A really strong one. And Misty Terrain is still up, so there's no option for Sleep Powders either. Um, Misty, although Misty Terrain also being up, does weaken the damage from Megan's own Palkia's Spatial Rend. And you've got the Sun up as well, so that weakens the damage from Hydro Pump too. So Palkia's not offering a lot right now, but it definitely the momentum swing is in Calyrex's favor here. And it looks like she is going for the Dynamax at the moment, with Trick Room being up as well. It looks like this is probably the Palkia here rather than the Calyrex Ice. So keeping that spread option alive with the Calyrex Ice and then potentially going for an extra chip into the Venusaur or maybe the Max Quake to be able to take the Venusaur's hit better if that Dynamax is. So Megan's got a lot of options here and some very help healthy restrictors. Yeah, and not a healthy restricted on Joanne's side of the field now after that Glacial Lance. It does just survive. Uh, the Groudon does survive the Glacial Lance coming out, and the Venusaur survives with the Focus Sash. You get to launch off a Max Flare that does so much damage to that opposing Calyrex Ice Rider. But still, again, not enough for the knockout. And here comes a Max Quake from the Palkia, following up into that Venusaur because it is in the sun. The Venusaur is super fast at this point. So it's going to underspeed in the Trick Room. You can take care of that Focus Sash or with that Palkia, doing that tiny bit of extra damage to the opposing Venusaur. Uh, but at least the Groudon was able to survive, and that means you get so much damage on the opposing ca uh, Calyrex, and also you don't give it a, grim, uh, gr a ca chilling nae boost this time. So many nays coming out from these Calyrexes. <laughs> and that Calyrex Ice didn't actually have a weakness policy, because that was a... It just kind of took the Max Flare... Like, not hugely well, but yeah, nothing propped at that point. So possibly like the White Herb or maybe like a, like a Lumberry or something Megan's running there that's kind of picked up in popularity recently. But Juana has brought his Umbreon now. So um, this is the exact time that it needs to do everything that he wants right now. Maybe a Snarl to get a double KO here, but it's not underspeeding the Calyrex Ice right now. Calyrex Ice is able to get the KO on the Dynamax Groudon, which is a massive KO. That Chilling Nae boost goes up too. But let's see if Umbreon can do something here. 
Potentially could, because the Calyrex is taking so much damage. Here's a Snarl that is able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Calyrex. So now you get the, the special attack reduction on the Apalka. It's a 1v1 once again. Uh, this The previous match it was Porygon 2 versus Groudon, that was going to be able to win that pretty comfortably. Uh, but now the Umbreon is taking on the opposing Palkia, and that's definitely the position it wants to be in. Uh, but very smart Max Geyser coming out from the opposing Palkia. If we were still going to be in the sun, that Umbreon, if it had some a lot of HP in the sun, and it's only going to recover a quarter of its health in this rain. So uh, it's actually going to be pretty close if it's going to be able to stall out uh, this Palkia now, because the, the Hydro Pumps, or the Max Geyser at least, for one more turn, is still going to do a very nice chunk of damage, especially because this Umbreon is forced to Moonlight this turn. Yeah, for some Moonlight, and in the Trick Room, so it definitely does underspeed the Palkia. Let's see if this is enough help to be able to survive the following Max Geyser here. So, still don't know the like item on this, but this is something like a Lustrous Sword. This is going to do a lot of damage. And as we can see, <laughs> Umbreon is still able to survive. I believe there's maybe a, one or two more turns of Trick Room left now. So, um, Umbreon is still able to Moonlight or go for extra Snarls here. But um, what's quite key is Megan does have the Earth Power option, which is 100% accurate. Everything else is probably not that accurate, so Juan just needs to kind of to keep the dream alive um, is to hope that he can live any following Earth Powers here. So, or even just stall out the rain. So a little bit of extra health puts him up to 72, followed by the Tide Pump, which does connect. <laughs> so I think in the rain with that Lucky Storm, seeing how much damage it did last turn as a Dynamax Pokemon, and especially with that critical hit, Palkia gets the KO on this Umbreon, and Megan Rattle of Australia takes the set 2-0 and o versus Venezuela's Joan Leon. Yeah, that was a, a very interesting set coming out there for both players. A lot of momentum swings going either way. It seemed like Joan was in the driving seat in that initial game one, and then as soon as the trick room gets set up, uh, then the momentum completely swings in the opposing favour. And then in the second game... Trickham wasn't even clicked for the first first few turns, even though uh, you just were going on the offensive with the Paragon 2 and the Tapu Fini. Uh, some really nice damage, and then as getting into the Trick Room, you get Glacier Lance, just spread damage, taking care of most of the opposing Pokemon. Uh, you would have expected the Umbreon to be able to be very good in that match, but it probably hit the field a bit too late uh, coming into that game too. If you lead with it, you can just go for the Snarls into the Tapu Fini straight away, stop any of the Calm Minds coming up, and the Paragon 2 just cannot do anything for the Umbreon, uh, but when it came in, it was taking on the, the Glacial Lance in the Trick Room, so it's uh, taking that attack before the Snarl hits, then setting up that rain at the end was very smart. It, not always the best thing to go for Max Geyser in the sun, uh, because it's not going to be doing too much damage, uh, but thinking of the future turns in that rain, uh, getting enough damage to stop the Moonlight and the rain, rain boosted attacks coming out was enough to take out the Umbreon. And we saw the Tapu Fini change over the Regilecki of of Megan's team as well, that came in quite crucial there because obviously, as we saw, Joan was leading that Thunderous and Venusaur like both games. So obviously, that's his plan because he, he it gives him the Taunt option, he gives it the Sleep Powder option, and as soon as you leave the Tapu Fini, it completely takes away the Sleep Powder option. Venusaur becomes a little bit more passive unless you want to commit a Grass move into the Tapu Fini, in which case it's one not getting a KO because it's too bulky, or two if you go for the Dynamax, then you're committing Venusaur to a Dynamax, and you can just get in Calyrex Ice later and then bop that completely through its focus sash thanks to the max hail so it just shows that even though megan like was denied the trick room like both times she still was able to come out on top um which shows the mastery of her team yeah absolutely so a great game coming out for this first one we're going to be cutting to a very short break and i'm sure we'll be back very shortly with another fantastic game so please stay tuned <laughs> 